Well, in today's mesmerizing edition of Water is Wet and Fire is Hot, Georgia and Alabama dominated the 2023 recruiting cycle, uh, not only within the SEC, but nationally, finishing uh, number one and number two, respectively. Uh, and yes, it's true, Alabama finished with the number one class and out-recruited Georgia, but Alabama almost always finishes with the number one class and almost always out-recruits Georgia, yet somehow they still can't make the playoffs or beat lowly Tennessee. But that's not the purpose of this video. That's a whole other separate topic. A uh, whole other separate topic altogether. We got to talk about Florida. Now, as some of you may be aware, uh, Florida Gators head coach Sunbelt Billy doesn't know what he's doing. Um, and this has been proven true once again with his first full recruiting class uh, in his time at Florida. And yes, I know there is another signing day in February. But here's the reality. 98% of the top 300 players in the country are signing during the early signing period. This has been the case. It's going to continue to be the case. If anything, it's going to go up. Uh, so what you're doing there in February is really just filling in holes with lower rated players. That's just the reality. That's not my opinion. That goes for everybody, Florida or any other team. The overwhelming majority of elite high school players, four and five star players, top 300 type players signed early, early signing peers. So you can look at Florida class right now and see what you're getting. And what you're getting is about the same thing you got with Dan Mullen, which is hilarious because if you talk to the Florida man, that was the number one issue about Dan Mullen, right? Well, can't recruit, can't recruit. Well, you're recruiting at about the exact same level. You're finishing around 12th. I know there's a bunch of different services that rank recruiting. I always use 24-7. I'm not here to tell you 24-7 is the best recruiting service. I just use 24-7 every single time to stay consistent when I'm talking. So if I mention that a team is ranked 12th today because they're 12th on 24-7, and then I make another recruiting video in a week and I mention something about recruiting, it, it's always 24-7 just so that I can stay consistent. So it's got nothing to do with uh, me thinking they're better or worse than any other service. It's just the one I've looked at the longest, so it's always the one I quote. Um, so they finished about 12th, which is about what they finished under Dan Mullen every single year. You go back and look. In fact, Dan Mullen had some top 10 classes. Uh, not the case for Sunbelt Billy. Sunbelt Billy got out recruited by Tennessee. I mean, it's just not a good, it's, it's not good. Um, their prize recruit, I guess, is that quarterback, Jalen Rashada, which they flipped from Miami, but then, you know, they lost uh, Cormani McClain first to Miami. Now it looks like um, Miami might also lose Cormani McClain. Some Florida fans are stupid. Uh, well, a lot of Florida fans are stupid and think this means they're getting Cormani McClain. You're not getting Cormani McClain. He's either going to Miami or Colorado, in my opinion. Anyway, it's not going to Florida. And that's the point of this video. Um, you, you lost uh, one of your best, deep, one of your other, so the, the highest rated guy you, you really had a chance or went after was Cormani McClain. You lost him, either to Miami or Colorado. He's gone. One of the next highest players you had signed was a defensive tackle. He flipped yesterday away from Florida to Central Florida. You lost a highly rated defensive tackle to Gus Malzoon over there at Central Florida. A group of five team. Now they're moving into the Power Five and the Big 12. But anyway, um, it's not a good day. Not a good cycle for Florida recruiting. Facts. Jalen Rashada. He might end up being good. He might not. The reality is we just don't know. Anthony Richardson was rated really, really high. He's a garbage can with legs. Emory Jones was rated really, really high. The guy was terrible. Y'all know this. So the fact that Jalen Rashada is rated high doesn't really mean anything. I don't know when. This isn't just a Florida problem. This is a problem for a lot of teams that recruit like Florida. Tennessee is a prime example of this right now. These, these teams that haven't been recruiting very well for years and they get like one good player and they think that means they're Bama or Georgia or something like that. Tennessee's this way with Nico, I'm about to leave you. Um, it's great that you got Nico. Even if he ends up being good though, you need about four or five Nikos every single cycle for three or four cycles in a row to even begin to approach the level of a Georgia or Bama when it comes to recruiting. And there's no guarantee that Jalen Rashad at Florida or Nico for that matter, and I'm not, I'm get off Tennessee. We'll, again, we can do another video on that if you want. It's not about whether Jalen Rashad will be really good or won't be really good. The point is, even if he is really, really good, what do you have to go along with him? And the answer is not much. And you're thinking, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll transfer portal. Let's talk about the transfer portal, Sunbelt Billy. Now, 
You lose Anthony Richardson, your current starting quarterback to the NFL. You lose your backup to Anthony Richardson, uh, kicked off the team. You start your third string, Jack Legg, in the bowl game against uh, Oregon State, and it's clear to anybody with a set of eyes that he's not any good. And he's not going to get good between now and the start of the next season. I know it, you know it, and the American people know it. Hell, it's so obvious even Sunbelt Billy knows it, and he doesn't know what he's doing. So everyone knows Florida's going out and getting a quarterback out of the transfer portal. Well, you got QBs like Devin Leary at NC State, Grayson McCall out of Coastal Carolina, Keaton Slovis up there at uh, Pitt. Hell, JT Daniels leaving West Virginia. DJ Uyunglele leaving Clemson. You got a lot of highly sought-after QBs. And then you have Graham Mertz, the worst Power 5 quarterback in the country. He's the sole reason Wisconsin has had two of the worst years this century in the last two years. He's the sole reason. A turnover machine. This guy's touchdown to interception ratio is strikingly similar to one Anthony Richardson. The guy is horrible. And he doesn't give you the, the running around aspect that Anthony Richardson gives you. The guy is an absolute disaster of a quarterback. Cost a coach's job at Wisconsin. Two of the worst seasons Wisconsin's had this century. What does Florida do? That's what we need. It's not that you needed him. It's all you could get. Grayson McCall told you no. All, Devin Lear, all these people told you no. And you bring in Graham friggin' Mertz. I'm going to tell you right now, Florida man, you better get on your knees. <laughs> I was about to say something inappropriate. I, I'm not going to say it because it's Christmas time. You better hope that by some miracle... Jalen Rashada shows up in Gainesville ready to play as a true freshman. The odds of that happening are astronomical, okay? He ain't Trevor <coughs> Lawrence. Very few QBs, I don't care how highly rated they are, are ready to go year one in big-time college football. Look at all the five stars that places like Alabama and Ohio State and different places like this sign. Very, very rarely does a true freshman quarterback have any type of meaningful, meaningful impact in year one. So the, the chances of that happening are not good. You're pretty much riding with Graham Mertz for 2023. What does that mean? It means you're not likely to improve much over 2022 in terms of overall record. Just look around at who you have to play. Just look around. You don't have the Jimmys and the Joes, and you don't have the X's and the O's. Because Billy Napier just, look, Flor Billy Napier will not be the coach at Florida in 2025. I have been telling y'all this. Y'all won't listen. There's going to come a point very soon. My guess is probably some point during the 2023 season is going to be the tipping point when Florida fans start telling me I was right all along. He will not be the coach at Florida in 2025. You can't run Dan Mullen off, a guy who's a way better play caller, on-field type coach than Billy Napier. You can't run him off because he doesn't recruit then bring in Billy Napier, a worse X's and O's guy than Mullen, and he's recruiting at the same level as Mullen? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Florida, what, what is Florida, fifth or sixth in the SEC this, the, uh, this cycle? It's the same thing they were under Mullen. Uh, 12th ranked class this cycle, Mullen's lowest class was ranked 12. Uh, he had, he had a, two top 10 classes. So, I don't know what's going on. I don't know, you know, blame the administration, blame the athletic director, blame the NIL collective. I, it's not my job to figure out what's causing the problems at Florida. It's just my job to get on here, point out the problems, and laugh about it. Uh, and, and, and one of the reasons it's, it's especially funny is because Florida fans just won't admit I'm right. Billy Napier is so far in over his head, I can't believe he can breathe. If college football was a swimming pool, this guy would have drowned three months ago. He needs swimmies. That's what Billy Na Billy Napier needs swimmies. Sunbelt Billy, you know, swimmies are one of them, uh, one of one of those things you wrap around your waist like the duck. Uh, well, hell, one of these. This is what he needs. <laughs> this is what he needs. Where's Miami? Oh, nowhere. <laughs> Why am I looking for Miami up there? Those are bowl game matchups. Those are bowl game matchups. Miami's over here with the garbage. Here you go. Miami was worse than Florida this past season and signed the fourth class. Recruiting matters. Recruiting matters. 
You know recruiting matters, Florida man, because that's why you ran off uh, a Dan Mullen. Miami's an absolute train wreck of a team this past season and somehow managed to sign a top five class, top four. Um, and Florida can't even get within the top ten, out recruited by Tennessee. Uh, it, it's, just a, it's just a crying shame. It's just a crying shame. I don't know when Florida fans will learn. Giant L yesterday for Florida on early signing day. Weren't, uh, didn't manage to flip any major commit from anywhere else to Florida and lost their best defensive tackle they had committed to Central friggin' Florida. Carmani McLean's in the win. All you can do is run a, a Jalen Rashada flag up your pole, cross your fingers, and hope to God that the guy shows up and knows what he's doing. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say he probably don't, at least not in year one. And even if he does, what is he doing? Just throwing it to Ricky Pearsall again? You've got ETN as a running back, and that's it. Your offensive line is horrendous. We saw that in the bowl game. Your defense, your, the only two good pieces you had on defense are gone. It's just a complete mess in Gainesville. And Billy Napier's not the answer today. He wasn't the answer when you hired him. He's not the answer today, and he's not going to be the answer tomorrow. He's definitely not going to be the answer in 2025 when Florida's conducting its next coaching search. Some people have said, why 2025, Lou? Why not fire him after this season? They're not firing him after, 20, after this season, 2022, for sure. It's his first year. And they're not firing him after next year either, 2023, because they won't be able to afford it. Plain, simple, pure facts. They're already paying three different head coaches. Florida's the new Tennessee. Change closes every three years. Stick your head in the sand and pray for a miracle. Good luck, Gators.